According to my calendar, it's January 10, 2012, and we're beginning that phase of this year's election cycle in which all good liberal Democrats declare in advance their unswerving commitment to voting for the Democratic candidate in November, in this case Barack Obama, regardless of what god-awful policy that candidate's administration has done, is doing, or can reasonably be expected to do in the future. It's like we're lining up for AT&T wireless service a year before we even get an old iPhone, except that contract we hate signing is to vote for a politician. So, I'm an undecided voter. This time around, I'm determined to make up my mind 11 whole months from now. It seems to me that folks who sign voting contracts with themselves prior to an election stand very little chance of influencing public discussions of what the candidates' positions are or should be on the issues we care about. It's like promoting democracy in reverse. Instead of politicians promising to enact policies in return for your vote, you're actually promising to vote for politicians. After all, if the candidates know that you're going to vote for them in every conceivable circumstance, then, well, why wouldn't they spend their campaign proposing policies that might influence me, the undecided voter, and not waste their efforts on you? Ask yourself, if a clear vocal majority of movement liberals simply said to political reporters and polling firms that our votes were just as up for grabs as those prized independents and undecideds about which we hear the villagers rhapsodizing every four years, would the Obama campaign be more or less likely to work at all to win our support? The obvious answer is Of course they would, just like they went for undecided liberal Democrats during the 2008 primaries, which got us the first major presidential candidate to publicly tell the truth about how invading Iraq was a supremely bad idea since, well, since the Ron Paul campaign told that identical truth when he declared his candidacy in 2007. Since I'd like the public discussion surrounding political campaigns to contain more true statements, no matter who says them, rather than less, I'd just as soon have the candidates talk to me, the undecided voter, about their positions. If we movement liberals are genuinely interested in promoting a culture of truth, then more of us should probably join the ranks of the undecided, so that this coveted voting bloc becomes more grassroots liberal and more informed about, say, the health and well-being of Social Security, instead of less, don't you think? I never believed I'd live to see the day when a general election candidate on the Republican side would find himself having to survive a primary in which official Orthodox Washington war policy, the policy of bankrupting our country through endless pointless intervention in hostile foreign lands, the policy that polls have consistently shown that a clear majority of the American public rejects, was debated this clearly and honestly in mass media forums. Sure, it's too bad that it's the Republican Party holding the debate in which the same old jingoist crap tries to hold its own against the rational liberal position on this nation going to war, but, well, as an undecided voter, I'm just happy that I get to hear about this new thing called non-interventionist foreign policy before I make up my mind this November. And you should be happy, too. You should be happy to hear truths like the capture of Saddam Hussein did not make America safer, whether Howard Dean says them in 2004 or Ron Paul says them in 2012. You should feel some hope. You should try ripping up that weird contract that tells you who you must vote for no matter if that guy manages to attack Iran between now and the election, and deciding to be an undecided voter like the rest of us. If you're a movement liberal like I am, really, what do you have to lose? So come on, fellow movement liberals, 
let's make these guys work for our votes for a change instead of working for them all year. I can tell you from personal experience that it feels great to be undecided. I'm Stuart Zeckman, and this has been yet another fun-filled edition of The Z-Files. 